Cyclone MMA. Sean O'Malley just shook up the Bantamweight division in a big way. A decision victory, a split decision victory over Piotr Jan is huge. Okay, so Sean O'Malley, he's ranked number 12 right now. Just took on Piotr Jan, ranked number one, the boogeyman of the Bantamweight division, and he beat him. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about whether or not he actually beat him, and then I'm going to talk about what this means for the Bantamweight division. First things first, let's get into the decision. So, if you're a Sean Malley fan, you probably think right now that it was a warranted victory and all things are good and he, you know, did enough to squeeze it out. And if you're a Sean O'Malley hater, then you think it's a complete robbery. You don't think he deserves a W. Where I land, somewhere's in the middle. Now, at the end of the fight, I was like, wow, Sean O'Malley fought way better than I thought he was going to. He did really good. He lost the fight. I thought that Piotr Jan took round one. He definitely took round two. And round three was close Ish. You know, you had the big knee from Sean O'Malley. It cut open Piotr Jan. You had Piotr Jan with a lot of control time, a lot of takedowns, and he was putting his own pressure and offense forward as well. Now, if you were to give Sean O'Malley that round, I completely understand and see it because that knee was devastating. And if you want to count that strike alone in terms of damage, it's huge. Now, round one, it was very, very close. Um, you had Sean O'Malley landing a big shot, and then Piotr Jan followed up and landed a big shot of his own. Piotr Jan, I want to say, had like a minute of control time. Sean O'Malley got a takedown at the end. It was close, but Piotr Jan was the one controlling the octagon. So if you want to go that far down on the scoring rubric, you can do it. I think Piotr Jan landed more. I think he had the more effective strikes. He definitely had the more effective grappling. Round two, it's clear Piotr Jan won that. I don't think anyone's arguing that. Now, this is one of those fights, too. You look at the media scorecards, 26 different media outlets scored this fight. 26 different media members gave the fight to Piotr Jan. So, if you want to call this fight a robbery, I suppose you can based on that. But you had two of the three judges give it to O'Malley. I think it was one of those close fights that most people would say got wrong. I don't know if you can call it a robbery. I think using the term robbery is overused. You had two close rounds, one clear cut round, and you want to choose Piotr Jan as the victor because of that, but it was close. Yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at. I don't see Sean O'Malley as the winner of that fight. I know he's mentally undefeated and he will continue to be mentally undefeated, but if you're Piotr Jan right now, you got to be feeling pretty bummed, pretty pretty salty. But um, that aside, all of the Sean O'Malley Hate aside, I'm not a hater on Sean O'Malley. Um, a lot of you think I am. I like the guy. But um, what does this mean for the Bantamweight division? What does this mean for the UFC? What does this mean for the hype the hype train that is Sean O'Malley? It means a lot. This is a huge step forward for him. A, I think it shows that he belongs in this top 10. He belongs in the who's who's of this Bantamweight division because he performed very, very well. And if that fight were to go another two rounds, the momentum was starting to shift in O'Malley's favor. Who knows what that looks like? Um, the, 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 the knee that Sean O'Malley landed on Piotr Jan is huge. Um, and I think just that fight in general is going gonna, gonna to open a lot of eyes for the, the critics of Sean O'Malley. Um, but his hype is exploding through the roof. Even though it's a bit of a controversial decision, I think his stock still increases by a lot. I'm curious to see where the rankings are come Monday or Tuesday or whenever they're released because he's probably taking the number one spot and he's definitely getting a title shot against Aljamain Sterling. So Sterling and Dillashaw fought. There was that weird shoulder injury that Dillashaw had in the fight. He dislocated his shoulder multiple times, just couldn't really fight at all. So another weird outcome for Aljamain Sterling, another defense. How does that fight go? Who knows? Aljamain Sterling, um, his grappling abilities are insane. The way he was able to handle Piotr Jan in the second fight was incredible. And it's hard to really gauge how he did against TJ because TJ was completely compromised. Um, but I think it makes for an interesting matchup on the feet. I think O'Malley's going to just have his way with Aljamain Sterling. On the ground, it's going to be the exact opposite. That's Aljo's world if he's able to get him out of there. Um, he's gonna he's gonna win the fight, but 
every fight starts standing. So that's five opportunities for Sean O'Malley to knock out Aljamain Sterling. I think I think the big thing here, the big thing with this decision win over Pierian is a star is born. O'Malley, I'd say, is like a B-level star. I think he's there with Jorge Masvidal and Usman and these other guys. And in the A tier, you got like Nate Diaz and Conor McGregor. I think O'Malley may have just kind of snuck up in that A tier. I think with this win, with the hype he already has and the young fan base he already has, now that he's a number one contender in this division, it's really huge. And I know the UFC, I know Dana White's licking his lips. I know he's super pumped that this outcome happened because it's just great to have O'Malley as you know, a spokesperson for the UFC strictly based on him making money. If he wins his next fight and he becomes a champion, everyone's got to get on board because he's going to be making a lot of money. He's going to be selling a lot of pay-per-views. And I think this is a huge step forward for him. And it's an interesting test. I think jumping the line from number 12 to number one and having the success that he had was amazing. He took a gamble. He really had nothing to lose. Piotr Jan had everything to lose. And Piotr Jan lost it. This is just an interesting outcome. I know it sucks for any Piotr Jan fans out there because they might feel like they got screwed over. It was a close fight, though. I had it for Jan. I know most people had it for Jan. But O'Malley, the sugar show, rolls on. Hey, did you guys know that I'm doing an MMA swag giveaway where I give away MMA t-shirts and a John Jones Funko Pop toy and MMA stickers? Well, now you do. If you want to enter this giveaway, subscribe to the channel, like the video you're currently watching, and comment below. I want to enter the giveaway and also tell me who your favorite fighter is. The winners will be announced on Halloween, so get to it. I'm putting him at un... I was a Francis Gowdy. And I after he beat Stevie, I said I will never doubt that guy. I know his mama got tickets, so.